to another This Sporting Life. And thanks for joining us on an evening when too much sport will be barely enough. Later in the program, at this very card table, perched as it is on the artistic and sporting coalface of this nature, nation will be joined by Graham Murphy. Yes, Roy and myself will be pulling on the tutu and forming a menage a trois with Graham in response to many of your letters, Gazza is in. But now let's get a big man on the leap out of the stagnant pool when we dangle a bit of white bait. And once his eyes stop glazing over, we ask him rampaging Roy Slaven, what was the highlight of your week? Yes, thank you very much, H.G. Nelson. Well, I'm very, very disappointed this week. I'm very, very disappointed. Imran Khan, that great citizen of cricket, has admitted in his biography, autobiography, just published, it's called uh, Imran Khan, I was and still am a cheat, yes. has acknowledged the fact and owned up that he's been cheating at cricket all his life, i.e. he's been doctoring the ball with his fingernails, lifting the seam, he's used bottle tops, he's used Swiss army knives, anything he could get his hands on out there in the middle, and he's, he has admitted that he got this from Safraz Nawaz, right. and he's passed it on to Wazam Akram yes. and, uh, and uh, Wakar Yunus, yes. And, and endorses everything that we have believed about Pakistani cricket, and that is that Pakistan is synonymous with cheating when it comes to cricket. With no those, surprises there. No surprises. With those telling thoughts, let's take a break and go to our street. Really? Hello, everyone. Welcome to Smith Street. And uh, obviously, we've got Harry the Hat coming down the street now. Harry works for the local council here, uh, booking cars. And we might see some bit of action from Harry. I'd say he's going to book cars and we're not <laughs> careful. Very, very funny. Mostly the uh, pity the bloke isn't behind us isn't moving. Otherwise, we'd be, we're on the double yellow line here. Harry, uh, obviously, walking behind a car. Oh, he's done before. We'll be able to see from his style what he's like. It'll be hello, 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 hello. What's going on? What's, What's going, going on? on? What are you doing here? You better move on. That's yeah. it. I've got That's a right. funny yeah. feeling that it might be going to happen very, very shortly. Indeed. Hey? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, we'll get a wriggle on. And they're so bloody easy to fool. <laughs> you can just fucking <laughs> say you're on TV and they stop. <laughs> they just let you do whatever you like. I tell you what. Why don't we chuck a U a year at the double yellow line? Bring into that car there. <laughs> and see what, <laughs> see what he does. does there. Nothing. Now, Harry. Now, gutless Harry. If you're watching the show, give us a hoy, because you're in for a big prize. Oh, you big batten for a start <laughs> on our street. Smith Street, darling. And we'll call you Plod for the rest of your life. <laughs> Yes, welcome back to The Sporting Life. And last week, uh, for three days, we spent... Well, they were the most exciting days of my life. They were at Warrnambool uh, with the three-day May Carnival there that they have every year in the first week of May. There's just three days of fantastic racing. And hats off to the WRC, the Warrnambool Racing Club, for taking steeplechasing and hurdle events seriously. Roy and I were lucky enough to see in its entirety the Stratford-on-Avon steeple. It was won by the great electric pants with the missing fat coming in second. And Roy had the ABC camcorder out and took these telling shots of the race from Start to finish. Let's go to them now. And Roy, take us through these highlights of the Stratford on Avon oh, steeple. Yes. Here we have 11 very fit horses and fit jockeys taking off HG. And, and gradually, as the race goes on, you see, you know, jockeys drop off, much in the manner of, <laughs> of Laurie Connell. Look, I, I, I love that sort of stuff. Oh, I, I love seeing jockeys down. fall off horses, and I love seeing horses fall over as well, I must Here say. They come. Here they come, and there we've got about three miles to go, old speak. Oh, Here we go. Look at that bloke go down. <laughs> sort. And I love it when the horses keep <laughs> going. <laughs> I love it when the horses keep going without riders yeah. on them either. It's yeah. very, very funny. Yeah. Here they come almost up to the health diet try yeah. it. Look uh, at Rowdy Tool up the back. <laughs> oh, there he goes. <laughs> I can hear the bullet going through him now. <laughs> Bang. And here they come up to the final one. The electric pants in front as yes. they near the post. And look at the missing fat. The, the missing fat, fat is pulled. No question, the fat is pulled. Roy. I love oh. seeing a horse without a rider coming oh, through. It's really sort of ghost-like, isn't it? It's, it's ghost-like, very spiritual. It's well, in fact, the toot finished third. Yes. Uh, it was the pants, the fat and the toot in that order. With Ed and Senna on board. <laughs> uh, Roy, obviously you've ridden steeplechasers, you've trained a lot of steeplechasers, you've had a lot of steeplechasers in your stables. What do you look for? Is it a horse with a reasonable mindset that you look for or is it a really stupid, dumb horse that you can make do anything? Yes. Take us through the process. Well, well, it's a bit of both, I, I suggest, H.G. I, I like having a horse who is prepared to die. 
Yes. Uh, because the chances are very, very good that in a hurdle such as this, that the horse is going to die. Now, you mentioned, and I know you were just joking at the time, that bang, I could hear the shot going off in the background eye when the horse fell over. That, in fact, did happen. And you find in hurdle events that there's a lot of, a hell of a lot of interest in, uh, you know, the petition coming out and people gathering around and boom, and the horse is just blown away. And, and I think it brings a little bit of magic to racing, and also it's important for kiddies to realise that life isn't a bowl of cherries. Yes. Life isn't a bowl of strawberries. Yes. Life is as well about death. And I think once kiddies realise that, in Elizabethan times, it was no surprise to have a skull around the house. Well, I think having a dead horse or the image of a dead horse in a kiddie's mind at a very young age is a very, very positive thing. Hats off, Warren and Bull. I'll go further than that, though, Roy. I know you used to take a float load of dud old horses down to the knackery and show them and then give them the choice of Warren and Bull or the knackery. And no surprises, a lot of them chose the, uh, the Avon steeplechase yes. at Warren and Bull, the yes. Stratford on Avon. Because they, they could go out laughing. I know, and they thought they had a much better chance. After all, four <laughs> yes. of the 11 finished. Yes. That's a lot better, Roger, than you get in most, uh, you know, chances in life. That's right. Well, there's only one thing better than going out laughing, and that's going out being laughed at. We'll be back with more life and more laughs in a moment. T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. Bad. the air in your neighbourhood with Rocket Dog Base. Craig Kelly back again. I hate killing dogs, but when I have to, I use Rocket Bait. They just go away and die as quiet as mice. It's certainly restored peace and quiet around here, and I'm playing a lot better for it. On this sporting life, it's time to open the lunchbox, throw in a Pex Pace sandwich, reach for the moon, and join those two tall Asians, Roy and HG, on Our Australia. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Lucas Heights on the southern outskirts of Sydney. It's the first time a film crew has been allowed in here, and the officials here have given me this green safety button this green safety button to protect us at all times and show us that this facility is absolutely tickety-boo safety-wise. However, if this green button should turn red in the next few minutes or so, please get out of the room you're watching television now. Please take evasive action. Please get under the nearest bed and get on the job, as that's the only thing that can save you. However, we will be sounding the all clear in the traditional manner of going, woo, 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 woo when it's all clear once again. However, Roy, we're on the search for not only attractive display of the facility, but evidence that Australia has the nuclear bomb. Take us through it, Roy. Well, it's mainly radioactive isotopes that are made here for medical purposes, but it is in every way a fully-fledged nuclear facility. Let's see what's on offer. I've got a code here that I should be able to... Seven, eight, nine. Let's see if it works. It did. Good art. Oh, I'll go Don't first, be Roy. Scared. I've got the torch. And the green button. Oh, come on in, Roy. It's fine. Roy, I went nuclear years ago. I've got a nuclear car, nuclear hot water service, and here I am at last in the world's greatest nuclear reactor. And look, my little green indicator, still glowing beautifully green there. So it's absolutely safe. It's absolutely clean. But I brought Roy down here to ask him a very good question. I brought him down to ask the question, has Australia got the bomb? When Gareth Evans goes up to Malaysia, China, all those other places, can he sit down at the table with the bigwigs and stare them dead in the face knowing that we've got the bomb? Roy, have we got the bomb? It's a good question, H.G. Let's see if it's possible that we could have the bomb here. Now, we, to have the bomb, we've got to have a breeder reactor. Yes. I'm not too sure if this is a breeder reactor. Let's examine and see what we can find out. Firstly. We've got to see if there's any yellow cake. Yeah, that, this minutes, is radioactive material here. I don't know if you can see that. That's radioactive material. Whether it's yellow cake or not, I'm not so sure. If we have a look in here, this is radioactive as well. But there doesn't seem to be anything in there. It's a bit hard to tell. So, so far, I don't know. But over here is the heart. This is where the rods will be. The, the, the rods that uh, enable the fission to take place over here. This is the baby. This is the big one. If we do have a bomb, this is where it will be housed. Personally, I don't think we do. I think it's too small. 
but it's very, very impressive. Now, I suppose people will be interested too in where the waste goes. Yes, the come this way. The waste is over here. Come this way. See, it's still green. It's still glowing green. It's fantastic. It's very, very safe. Very, very clean. And the wastage round here, coming over this way, right over here. That's right. On your boat. Up, up, up. Here it is. Look, there it is. That's where the waste goes down there. And look how green it's glowing. It's still glowing absolutely green. And in there, Roy's going in. Careful, Roy. It's yellow cake. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful gear. Look at that, and you'll find probably that there are fish or slugs breeding in here. Look. It's so bloody safe. It's a safe Look. discovery. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's living. Hey, it's it's alive. Oh, that's tremendous. Chernobyl didn't have anything like this. They didn't even have a safety system like we've got here. That's the bomb. That's Australia's nuclear industry. That's our Australia. This sporting life now asks you to walk a mile in the shoes of a special Asian. And tonight uh, we're joined by Dan Twiz, Graham Murphy. Thanks for coming in, Graham. And you know, to start with, where do the ideas come from, and how do you formulate them? You know, do you sit down with a packet of minties and a sort of a, a napkin on the kitchen table or a handkerchief spread out as the stage, and move the minties around uh, as the ideas come? No, really. You know, for me, it's the people that give me the ideas, the team. So you look at the team as they file in with the footy jumpers on and think, oh, I can do something with this. Absolutely, spot. they're an interesting lot. You know, they give me inspiration. They really. They're very generous, you know. Yes. It's not just me sort of feeding. I'm not just sort of a catalyst for ideas from the muse outside. I actually look at humanity because they're very human. They're, you know, sometimes quite naughty, actually. And they don't... Uh, it's not as though you choreograph uh, the great issues, you know, like uh, death and think, oh, I'd better do this and have a few people fall over and then maybe somebody stub their toe and that sort of stuff. You, you sort of literally size them up as they come through the door and think, oh, yes, we've got a few for, a, say, uh, who could lift some people or run in a certain direction yeah, or I turn think, quickly. I think death and the grand issues have been done to death, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah. personally, I think that it's time now. We looked at the smaller issues, you know, the, the minor things of life, you know, the groceries. The, I think dance really can handle everything, quite frankly. I don't think there's anything well, that right. dance can't tackle. I, I remember uh, dancing years ago with Garth Welsh. Yes. And uh, the Panobs, when they blew into town a few yeah. years ago, and uh, it was an organic thing, Graham. We just sort of got together. We didn't know what was going to happen. We had no idea. But there was and chemistry. so we just, we just sort of oozed about. We just sort of moved and it gradually took shape of its own volition. Mm, Is this the way you work, Graham? Do you just get people together and let's see what happens? But, you know, I find that I'm sure you contributed a great deal to the creative process. I'm sure yeah. you just didn't stand there like a piece of putty and say, mould me. No! No, I hate that. No, I, hate I, that I, I love dancers that come that. with their own ideas. Absolutely, they've got brains and they have to use them, you know. They're not... Yes. Sort of, I mean, I guess if you're a quarter ballet, then you sort of... you wait for the team spirit to arrive yes. and you move as a great one-legged yes. monster. Yeah, that's in right. In unison. But if you want to be a star, you have to have something to say personally. Indeed.